Today on The Breakfast, the federal government accuses presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Peter Obi, and his running mate, Dati Baba Ahmed, of treason. We'll have further conversations on the show. Also on The Breakfast, the federal government secures the sum of $800 million from the World Bank under the National Social Investment Program as part of palliative to cushion the effect of subsidy removal. And don't forget, we'll also be looking through today's newspapers, analyzing the biggest stories of the day. Good morning and welcome to The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. We're reaching you live from our studios right here in Victoria Island in Lagos. My name is Messi Ebopo. Now, no, we're almost very close to the weekend. As always, we start our conversation with what's making the rounds. We call it Top Trending. And this morning, what, what are Nigerians talking about or what have... Uh, we had people talk about, Nigerians have been talking about in different quarters, although this is in Lagos, is the fact that the court has actually granted Chrislin, it's a school, a permission to conduct an autopsy on uh, Whitney Adediron. And uh, yes, however, it was reported, uh, this report got a lot of people talking about the uh, autopsy that the corona inquest has granted, has granted... Uh, the school to conduct this autopsy. Now, Whitney, who is a 12-year-old child, I mean, she's gone now. Uh, she died during uh, the school inter-house sports in Lagos. So the magistrate, of course, there's been a back and forth with the court. Uh, the magistrate granted the permission as, as at uh, Tuesday, because yesterday was Wednesday, while ruling on the application filed by Chrisland School seeking leave to assess some items obtained from the corpse of the disease. It's also important to note that, you know, Whitney has been buried, and it's, it, it's an emotional thing. Whatever the case is, you can't imagine that you have lost a 12-year-old. Uh, whatever the situation is, is, is nothing to write home about. So according to the report, the school said that it will enable it uh, to consult with the independent forensic pathologist and to allow the consultant to testify accurately. Uh, so the pathologist uh, would have to make findings before the court so he can testify. But uh, the school told the corona that the request was made because the representative, that's the pathologist, only attended the initial autopsy that was carried out by the government as an observer and did not carry out any test or dealt with any sample. So it's more like, okay, I didn't touch anything. I didn't do anything. I was just an observer. Uh, if the government did this, so you had both parties to it, that's basically what you're saying. The items ordered to be released to the applicant are the paraffin block of the skin sample and slides from which the diagnosis of electrocution was made, samples of the urine, blood, and other body fluid collected at autopsy, the sample of bones, muscle taken from the disease, for independent DNA analysis. Other items are all photographs taken during the conduct of the, of the autopsy, copies of other working samples and documents made in the course of the autopsy, and the result of uh, all toxicology tests conducted. So um, the argument, I have seen the thoughts, if you go on social media, uh, any of the social media platforms, Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook, uh, there's a lot of reaction as to, oh, how would you not allow the dead, you know, to rest in peace? Uh, little we need to just have, you know, a peaceful rest. You want to exhume her body and have that autopsy, you know, conducted. Now, it's far fetched from all of that. What's going to happen is that this autopsy is going to be conducted or the fact that they have to conduct another autopsy, it's... Uh, on the samples that they've already collected. So, I mean, the autopsy that was carried out before this time. So they still have the samples. It's the samples that they would use, you know, to conduct another autopsy. But however you look at it, it, it might just, uh, those who have said that, you know, Whitney needs to rest. The family needs also to be in peace. 
But then, of course, do the people, the school have a right to an inquiry to, you know, for that? Because prior to this time, there's also been, you know, a judgment that's been put out. Apparently, there's also been the fact that uh, the Lagos State Government, through the Ministry of Education, had ordered the temporary closure of, you know, the school, Chrysler School, Okbebi in Ikeja. And they were also arraigned for a couple of person teachers and students for negligence, manslaughter, and what have you. So it just looks as if, I mean, not looks as if, but it's a case where you have an institution wanting to just get it right and say, hey, that's not the case. Because the original autopsy that came through, or the autopsy that came through, uh, it was an autopsy that was carried out by the government, and then you had uh, both parties as witness, observers, to say that this, but then there's another argument as to, oh, I wasn't previewed to touch this and all of that, you know, touch all of that. I was just observing. I can't really say for sure. And now and then you have a coronary requesting to have another autopsy, which of course the court has actually granted. Fingers are crossed. Everyone is waiting to see how that pans out. But just before that happens, uh, the thoughts are really, you know, very saddening. It's that why, why can't the dead just rest? You know, allow Lee and Whitney to just rest in peace and just have a great time. But because, you know, for every other time that you have a court in, okay, case in court and then you have a court ruling, whatever it is, it's important that you don't preempt, you know, the judgment or just try to preempt the court and whatever it is, not looking at the merit of the case. Then, uh, but the other issues that we can look at is from the inception of this conversation is that if we do the needful, I'm not sure we'll be here. So if, if Chris Lynn as a school had done the needful and they continue to look at the lapses because you, you don't expect to have a perfect, perfect system. But I would rather think that, you know, it's important to look at what it is that is not being done and trying to get it right. For instance, I had mentioned earlier that way back as one who grew up in Nigeria and went through the nursery and primary school, the entire educational system, uh, I was, you know, opportune to have a fact that if you're going to have an inter-house sport, it's going to happen within your school premise, right? It's going to be just within the school. Uh, and within the school, I'm sure that the infrastructures are 100. So, but when you take, you know, activities outside of the school premise, what do you expect? But that's not an excuse. What would have been said is that if the resort, because according to the resort at the end of the day the, uh, that came through, the government autopsy was that she died uh, via, I mean, it was through electrocution because uh, there was also another video that went to it where a little kid or child of school was trying to explain what had happened. She was electrocuted, how she was found. She had uh, her tongue out. She, she, it was dark and what have you. And then the autopsy also, you know, confirmed to all of that report, however. So, but I think that, you know, whether or not it's uh, Chris Lern right now, I, I think that it would be important to look at what actually led to that, what it is, despite whatever the ruling, the autopsy had said, to see how you can improve on all of these excesses. Because this, we call it preventives. So if there's malaria, there's some actions that you need to take to ensure that you don't have malaria. And it's called, uh, you know, the preventives in in medical science, they call it the preventive, preventive medicine. You don't have to let it happen. If you act in a certain way, you can prevent the occurrence of contacting malaria. So clear the bushes around, ensure that you sleep, you know, in uh, a mosquito-treated net, what have you, and all of that. These are some of the issues. So organization, especially the institution, Chrysler, because they have been over, over and over and again in the news for the wrong reason. And I'm thinking that it would be important to pay attention, you know, to some of the lapses, whether they are true or not, just pay attention to the issues that have been raised or the concerns and try to get it right so we can protect life. Because I don't think that there will ever be any compensation for a loss of a life. So even if there's going to be closure of the school, it's going to be some sort of payment, manslaughter, people are going to be jailed, it cannot, as much as people will say that's some sort of justice, but that cannot equate to having to return a life. When you die, you have died and you are gone. You have no business with the leaving. And for a 12-year-old, first child of a family, uh, looking at the reports of the, you know, the father and the mother, 
I, I feel that it's going to be a, a big one for the family. They'll continue to mourn. There's nothing that's going to ever fill that vacuum. And we just think that as an institution, beyond, yes, we understand that we live in a system where capitalism is what it is. We're being driven by profit. We constantly have to make it and what have you. But we can also take out the fact that, hey, we're humans before we're any other thing. And so we need to pay attention to too many details, especially when it has to do with, you know, a life. It's very saddening, and I remember the last time we had this conversation was pretty teary, but um, of course my emotions are in check this morning. I try not to share, share the tears, but I just hope that we can do better. There are too many lessons to learn from all of this, even for Chrisland as an institution, even for all, every other organization and as individuals. We can't also take out the fact that we're human beings. We can't lose that in the course of trying to be uh, you know, business persons and make profit and profit here from whatever it is that we're doing. We need to be careful. And everything is born out of love. Honestly, that's it. I think that the world's problem is, 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 is just within the fact that if we love one another, if we love ourselves as a people, then our actions would always, you know, be 100. You don't even understand what happens when you die. Just imagine a 12-year-old, you had a 12-year-old, and then they left your house, you know, your 12-year-old, whether a boy or a girl, left your house in the morning and didn't return. Uh, the next thing you get a report that she's dead. Not that she complained of any ailment. How do you even explain all of that? So, yes, I grew up in a time where, yes, we had physical activities, you know, in the hospital and what have you, but it happened within the school premise. And then if you're going to have it externally, why don't you check the environment to ensure that it's safe for the children, the kids, because you can't even control them. These are children, these are teenagers, and really most times you don't expect that you have 100% of your judgment being fair. So we'll leave it at that. We'll just move on to the next because... Uh, for the want of time but fingers across we just see what pans out from all of that and we really do not I mean I can just only imagine how the family will be feeling right now uh, this can never go away okay so then uh, there was serious tension as of yesterday while you and I were here talking about a lot of stuff tension in Asaba Delta State and that also constituted to you know the crux of the matter uh, following the allegation of killing of a middle-aged businessman by a police officer <laughs> after the disease reportedly refused to offer him 100 naira, 100 naira, 100 naira bribe at a checkpoint. So when he died, the killing led to a serious protest in the capital city. That's in, you know, Asaba, Delta. Now, residents of this, you know, community condemn, you know, this particular act of the police officer and, you know, the fact that the disease was also identified as Ibe Emmanuel Onyeka. He was shot within Asaba Metro Police. If you have visited Delta State or Asaba, I'm sure you probably can relate with it. It's a very peaceful place. It's not rowdy like Lagos. There's no drama in Asaba. It's calm, quiet. Um, so... But that's actually what happened. The people took to the street. But it's also reported that, you know, Onyeka, the late eBay Emmanuel, is in his early 20s, apparently 20-something, you know, not in his mid-20s, early 20s, and was said to be a phone dealer at a popular market and all of that. So I, I think that we do have a track to that effect. Uh, I advise that you take caution. Some of these graphics might not just be pleasant to you. Let's take, let's roll this tape now. It was just a scene, so we weren't able to, you know, put out that particular video that probably would have shown when he was shot, and maybe his lifeless body. But uh, that's actually what happened. It's it, it's really unfortunate. We remember vividly one of the biggest movement in Nigeria that I'm not sure any of us can forget. You and I can forget is hashtag #nsas or the #nsas movement, and what actually gave birth 
to the ancestors movement is because of the police brutality every other time. It might interest you to know. If you want to know, just go ahead and look at uh, what the phrase or the slogan for the Nigerian police is. Police is your friend. Check it out. I'm not even trying to patronize you this morning. So, but every other time when you look at the action of the men of the Nigerian police force and you juxtapose that with what, you know, the phrase is or the slogan is, it's, it's different. There's no correlation. It's please really our friend. Yes, we understand. I personally can tell you because I have closely worked and done a couple of reports, interviewed, have, you know, relationship with men of some of the police, I mean, police officers, whether it be it in Lagos, but, you know, all the parts of, you know, the country. And we, I, we can really say that the, you know, the condition of living for police officers is not favorable. But hey, that cannot be an excuse. That cannot be an excuse for, you know, put on the, the trigger and just squirt and fire. How do you even do that? So, there's a lot that needs to be done. Yes, the police workforce or the security agencies are not properly taken care of. They are underpaid, they are underfunded, welfare is nothing right about, it's not encouraging. I have seen a police station where they have to use a lantern to work, and I can't never forget that every other time in my life. Uh, there are too many things that have gone wrong, you know, with men of the Nigerian police force. We understand that you're underpaid, we understand everything. But, you know, if in all of this, we say that it's not enough for you to just, because you have a gun, you just cock it and then you shoot randomly. You take a life. You know, there's no remorse, there's no consideration. How do you even sleep at night? It's worrisome. And I, I for one, know for sure that that's not the modus operandi for the men of the Nigerian police force. That's not the, the mode of conduct. That's not what it should be. If your phrase, if the slogan says police is your friend, do you know what a friend means? Really, I think we need an overhaul of the entire system. Well, it's a good thing that you have, you know, the Delta State Police Commission or the command at the particular time saying, hey, this will not go unchecked. Justice will be meted. We are not going to condone. And I'm sure that the people, uh, the Nigerian people, those in Delta State are going to follow this to the latter. That justice also needs to be meted. Now, you ask yourself, how does this continue every other time? Because this will not be the first time we're reporting this case. It probably might also not be the last time we're reporting it uh, because there's also going to be the case of police brutality over time but then again we come back to justice we come back to the fact that even as a police agency as police responsible for ensuring that lives and properties are maintained you know in a civil dispensation in a civil society uh the people really get justice uh w w what's the level of i mean people pay for their crime what's going to happen is it just going to be swept under the carpet will it be made to face the you know the law i mean there will be some investigation and then you know uh, justice again should be given now because when every time people commit crime and they don't get punished for it it feels like there's an impunity we constantly enthrone it and people think that they can do whatever it is that they like and get away with it without being questioned or without being made to face the law so yes this is a big call to the police again once again to rewrite you know her image and the impression that she has on a lot of nigerians as to is this case just going to be just one case that has gone it doesn't matter. It's just one person, and that's very important. It doesn't have to be 10 people. It doesn't have to be 100, but we're saying this one person. What exactly is going to happen? We hope that investigation will be carried out and that justice would actually be met at the end of the day, despite whoever is involved. And this should also serve as a deterrent, because I don't think that that's, you know, mode of operation, that in the course of carrying out your duty, cock a gun, if you have a gun as a police officer. The first time I've, you know, I saw a gun shot live, for no reason, was in Lekki. Honestly, you have no idea how I felt. It was really, really un unbelievable. It was something you don't even want to experience. Anything could have happened at this point in time. We need to do better as a people. Yes, the condition is not favorable, but is that an excuse for us to act irrational? In the course of discharging our duties, especially when we have claimed that, hey, we, we, we love the system. We're patriotic. We're here to give us time and services. We have to do better as a people. We constantly have to hold ourselves accountable. And we know that we have a system. So yes, again, police brutality continues despite the protests and, you know, all that has happened in 2020. And then there's no result. 
Quickly, there's also another that's uh, of interest to a lot of Nigerians. I mean, it gets everyone talking, especially when you have former President Olusegun Obasanjo put out a letter. He's known for letter writing. I remember that that's also, of course, you know, in the course of, you know, schooling. So if you ever went through the four walls of Nigerian education system, you probably would have written a letter or not. Whether it's a fiction or non-fiction, you'll be told to write about how you spent your holiday, even if you didn't go for a holiday. And what have you? But you know, letter writing is one of the things that uh, former president has been known for, especially when uh, he's left office. He's been very vocal with letter. He put his thoughts about about issues, and people have different thoughts. A lot of Nigerians. So one of such is that he's asked that you know, uh, in the case of uh, Ikwere Madu, he's is asking that that they, they should temper justice. The United Kingdom court should temper justice with mercy over the Ikwere Madu's case. Uh, he's saying, temporal justice with mercy. He appeals to the United Kingdom court over Ikwerimadu, his wife, and, uh, you know, the case involving their child and uh, ha organ harvesting. So, yes, uh, like I rightly mentioned, the former president, if you don't already know, Lucia Gunnar has pleaded with the Central Criminal Court of England, otherwise known as the Old Belly, uh, to temper justice with mercy. It is also uh, called, you know, leniency he should he is appealing that they should be lenient in delivering judgment so yes uh, in all of this like i said that the the need or the essence of this letter was that uh, message should be tempered in may 5th because in may 5th there will be sentencing uh, of convicted deputy senate president ike kwaramadu and his wife beatrice after a six-week trial at the Old Belly last month, or the couple had their donor, and their donor, their doctor, I beg your pardon, were convicted of organ harvesting in a ruling which was said to be the first of its kind under the Modern Slavery Act, which is, you know, it's in public domain. In that particular letter that was dated April the 3rd, uh, the president, former president, I beg your pardon, addressed to the chief clerk of the court. He said uh, he was saying that he's advocating for leniency for the lawmaker and his wife. He also acknowledged in the implication of the couple's action, which he described as unpleasant and very condemnable and cannot be tolerated in a sane or civil society. I mean, wisdom, a man who's filled with wisdom is what you, you describe uh, former president as. So he said a treatment in which someone is punished or judged, I mean, He's acknowledged the fact that, yeah, this is what it is. But then again, we go to what the case of leniency is. Uh, a treatment of someone which is punished or judged less strongly than it should be expected. And defend, However, defending lawyers are asking for the leniency on this particular ground. Uh, that letter is quite lengthy. It's a two-page letter. Uh, so you have the first page and the second page if you haven't seen it already. Uh, for the want of time, I can't really go through the details of that letter. But in summary, what he's asking for is that, hey, Ikura Madi, Kikura Madi, his wife, the doctor, everyone is involved. What they've done is not acceptable to, you know, uh, mankind. It's inhuman and what have you. It's condemnable. But we're asking that for the fact that, hey, he has, uh, in terms of character, he's, he's a jolly good fellow. Uh, in the in, in in terms of you know social relations and also in the course of carrying out his duty, uh, please it's important that you just you know consider some of these issues and also look at the fact that there's a daughter that needs to be considered. But that hasn't sat well with a lot of Nigerians. That hasn't sat well. Some people think that hey, Ikekwere Madu should pay for it. What it is, it is what it is, and there's no gain saying you can't go back and forth with all of that. Uh, but yes, it's normal. This actually happens. Leniency, it's always a case. People make this appeal, but it's also on the other hand for the court to, you know, pay attention to it. Others have said that uh, Obasanjo's letter over time has not yielded any result. I mean, there are too many letters he's written. Uh, how, how effective has this result been uh, if, you know, the Nigerian populace or the Nigerian uh, system has not taken him seriously? Do you think that the court, that's entirely not, you know, my decision, our concern. We will just fold the ants and see how all of this pans out. But what has happened is he's making an appeal based on, you know, character and other issues and saying, hey, we're asking. Yes, what he's done is very, is detasteful, it's not important, but then he should go ahead. But also another underlying question is, how come it, 
is this because, does this happen to every other Nigerian? Uh, this is because he's a prominent person who's been number three person in government at the time. He's very powerful and public, you know, public servant. Uh, would the former president make this commitment to a lot of Nigerians who are going through a lot in diaspora? I mean, in other cases, would this statement be put out? But you don't really put out uh, such comment if you're not close. There has to be a close relationship, you know, with this other person. I, I, I see the thoughts of Nigerians across, but then uh, this has been made, fingers crossed. Let's see how this pans out. That's so much we can take at this point on the top trending. Uh, we will return tomorrow with more interesting conversation. Thank you so much for staying with us. Now, when we come back, Ezekiel and Yaitok will be joining us this morning on Off the Press, where we look through the front pages of National Dailies and bring you up to speed with the biggest stories and great analysis. I ask that you stay tuned. Good morning. <laughs>